here we are again at the equity and expected value calculators which I believe are very useful for all you guys again who are looking to really up your play and yeah get into yeah, expert level expert level understanding of the behind the scenes knowledge of, of higher level and, and professional poker so when you are buying in for 30 big blinds at NL50 we're gonna be buying in for fifteen dollars right here and what I want to show you right now is what your probable rake will be whenever you shove all in. And this is going to be, again, it's going to be happening, happening a lot more than when you are big stacked. So in a heads up pot, you're going to have two players that get in for the effective stack size of 15, plus the blinds maybe, if both of you are outside of the blinds. And that means capped at 5%. Um, the rake is going to be about a buck fifty, right? Whenever you shove in a heads-up pot, more or less. Now, if you get into a three-way pot scenario, then you're getting just into yeah two twenty, and I mean you're not even really going to see the three-dollar cap in most scenarios, right? That's going to be rare, I would say, rarer. Now, if you're playing an NL hundred situation, then this is of course going to be capped at three already in a three-way pot and already even in a two-way pot you'll be capped at three bucks so we'll, we'll be playing the NL50 um, to get our feet wet here and show you guys how that works just so you know I mean that's that's what we're looking at um, let's back it up about a buck fifty when we shove is gonna be the rake in general and that's of course already calculated for you but in case you guys don't have these calculators then just wanted to mention that um, any given pot that you get in on is gonna be you know, all in if you're outside of the blinds both of you guys Whenever you shove for 15, you'll be taken down around 29. So this is a steel scenario. The small blind is 25 cents. The big blind is 50 in our NL50 environment. It's folded around to us. We make a steel raise up to three big blinds. In this case, it's a dollar 50. And the player in the big blind then raises it up to four. All right. And our amount to call at that point is going to be. Yeah, exactly three dollars or six big blinds right if you're thinking of big blinds that should be now if we're gonna just flat that three bet we're gonna need 32 percent yet again guys to hit a playable flop and if we're going all in for the three then we need 32 percent more or less 34 with the rake to break even um, by an all-in call all right our effective stack size after we make that steel raise is gonna be 1350 or 27 big blinds as you guys see here in the steel calculator now, when we shove over the top as a 4-bet, we're going to need 47% equity, including the rake, when our opponent never folds. 47%, remember that number. Good. The opponent, when we do shove, versus his re-steal, is going to need right at 36% to make the call all in. And after the rake, again, you guys see the difference. Let's just plug it in and see what they say. Yeah. 151 in that in that scenario where one of the players is in the blinds uh, concerning that uh, concerning the rake so that scenario one uh, we can look at an open razor and a three better and now we're on to call for four we haven't we haven't posted anything yet so we've got 15 bucks so we're looking at a potential four bet all in here Right? And if we're going to call the four, we need 39 or 41% equity with the rake. And if we shove, right, and only one of these guys calls us down, then we're going to need, yeah, right at, again, 49% to make that push. All right. Just to give you guys a couple ideas, and now I'd like to check out what this looks like here in our EV shove calculator. So here we go. Same scenario. We raise it up as a steal. The player in the big blind makes a three bet, he re-steals, and total pot at the moment of our decision to either call or shove all in for our remaining stack is right here at 625. All right, the effective stack, our effective stack, the hero's effective stack at the beginning of the round. The maximum we can win from our opponent when we get called down is uh, another 15. And our bet at that point, we had posted above 50, All right, we had raised. So the dead money is going to be at that point the small blind plus our raise 
minus the assumed rake of a buck fifty. Right, and this is important again for the expected value count. And yes, this is this is the situation. And if we assume that we've got forty-seven point six percent equity as a four bet shove, and he or she never folds, we're just in a wash situation, plus minus zero EV. All right, and again, the minimum fold equity is um, listed for you guys below. The forty-seven sixty comes from equity when you're on a pair of nines and you think this guy isn't re-stealing with sevens or better ace-jack or king-queen. You shove over the top with your nines and against that entire range that's what your equity looks like. Back to the action at 47 percent he never needs to fold and we're still good. So back to the example hand that we had at the very beginning of this video when we're looking at expected value calculations when big stacked We'll also use the ace diamond, ace of diamonds, king of hearts, the ace king offsuit example here in the following examples. Let's assume that we've got ace king offsuit and we raise that up on the button. We get re raised, a re steal from the big blind, as just explained above, with the same range that we'll be three bet re stealing with. Right, sevens are better, ace jack are better, king queen. When that person in three bets, this range and then calls 100%, so there's no fold equity. When we're holding ace king offsuit, we're going to be making just over two and uh, just over four and a half big blinds every single time we do that. Now, let's assume that they are only going to call us with tens or better ace queen, which is going to be very similar to our calling range. So the fold equity that we're going to have is with the card removal here 48%, and that's going to make a huge difference. Now let's assume that this is a really tight re-stealer and she only re-steals with jacks are better or ace king and calls 100% of that three betting range. Here we're in a negative EV spot and unfortunately at the storm tables we're not going to have the HUDs to let us know that. So we're going to assume this somewhat wider range for three bets and in steal scenarios from the blinds, from savvy players and maybe something like this. Um, maybe tens of better ace queen, let's say at 49% we have, where it's just a wash, right? So it's it's getting kind of tight there in the three bet re, re steals if they're wider than 8%, or if they're tighter than 8%, 7-8%. What I want to do here is look at a couple different scenarios with other hands, other than ace king, where we can plug in uh, this without the fold equity right now and see how we how we stand up and how, how wide we should be four betting over the top in re-steal scenarios. So I didn't change anything concerning the the scenario that we had. It's again our open open raises a steal to three big blinds, uh, re-steal from the big up to nine big blinds, and we shove over the top then for the remaining stack of 1350. And we're looking at different equity that we're gonna have versus the assume ranges, their three bet ranges, whenever they never fold. And essentially right here in this spot we need for plus minus zero EV let's go ahead and plug in 49 even nope. all right 47 looks about right so 47 including the including the rake of about a buck 50 that we're assuming and yeah we're gonna be in a wash scenario when they never fold at 47 percent now if they're folding maybe half their range, yeah, we can we can go quite a bit wider than this. Let's have a look. All right, we can even get it all in as a four bet. Let's say you guys can play with this calculator a bit. Wow. If they're folding half of their range, right, we can even shove over the top where we're only at 25% against their calling range and still be plus minus zero EV. Now that's probably a bit extreme. Let's just assume that they're going to drop yeah, a third of the range on average. Alrighty, and 35 is just getting there. Let's do 36. Yeah, and it'd be safe. So 37% is where we need to be, more or less, in a four bet push scenario as a hybrid player, as a, as a mid stack player when your opponents are re-stealing against you. 
So that means if, if you assume that they're going to fold one third of their three betting range, one third, when they do call you, you need to have 37% equity in order to be plus minus zero EV in the long run. So what is this 37% concerning different ranges? Well, depends of course on the three bet range, but this is a relatively tighter three bet range here. Let's do nine's a better ace queen. We can go all the way to four betting with nines against that very range. And with our ace X hands, we can get down to ace queen, ace queen offsuit. So nine's a better ace queen if they're three betting really, really tight like that as a root steal. That's about it. Um, let's see, a king queen is also not good. So, yeah, nines are better. Ace queen offsuit gives us 37% equity when they're folding one third of the range when we come over the top. Good. Now, if they are betting again this wider range here, sevens are better, ace jack, or king queen, we can actually four bet any pair. <laughs> again, assuming that they're going to fold 33%, right? And if they're only calling tens or better ace queen, they're going to be they're going to be folding 44%. So in that case, and again, we're not going to have the stats, so this is going to be to be a bit more of a variance play. But you can actually four bet push as a hybrid strategy player any pair at that point if you put them on a three bet range of eight and a half, and you can even with all of your aces down to ace nine suited, raise that up as a shove. And the king queen is also good. King queen suited. King queen O is just good enough. And let's see if there's anybody else down here. King, no. Okay. So that's pretty much it, guys. So um, I don't see. I mean, yeah, with stats, they're going to be three bet squeezing or three bet restealing quite a bit wider. Um, yeah, a lot of players, as you guys have seen, are just three betting with nonsense. But in general, I like looking at these two lines. Um, and assuming you know some kind of fold equity in here, and again, this is we're not going to be plugging this in in real time play, but this is pretty much I think the bare minimum that we're looking at. And again, yeah, it's it's essentially any pair is a four bet shove. It's a bit wide, um, but given this assumption, we're still good. Now, again, the tighter they go, the tighter you have to you have to play. Now, let's go ahead and. Look at these three ranges. And we can get all the way down to Yeah, again here. More or less ace nine suited for a wash in a lot of scenarios. Ace ten off is just good enough. And yeah, if you want to be safe guys with your four bet shoving, I would say a, any ace jack, maybe the ace ten, and pretty much, pretty much any pair as a four bet shove in re-steal scenarios from the big blind. Right, given this assumption, if we want, you know, if we want to have a good forty percent equity, um, yeah, then you tighten it up a bit. Fives, it looks like more or less, and ace queensies, uh, ace jack suit, this kind of stuff. So yeah, again, play with this at your at your own leisure, guys. See you know see how this is working in your own game. And now let's flip the tables a bit and continue on with this example. But this time we're going to be in the blinds. We're going to be in the big blind, for example, and we're going to be three betting. Guess what? As a re-steal, exactly the range we were just looking at when we were four betting over the top. So how does that work out for us when they then four bet into us versus our re-steal as a three bet? We'll use exactly this range as our open range. And then we'll look at how wide we can call when the guy comes over the top for a four bet. And I've got here again, sevens are better with a big question mark. Nines are better ace queen for a 5% calling range, four bet calling range in a steel scenario. Let's have a look. So here we are with the equity calculation yet again. This time we are in the big blind, so the small blind posts a quarter, we post 50 cents. It's folded around to the button, who then makes a steal raise of three times the big blind to $1.50 in our NL50 environment. And we re-steal as a 3x move. So pretty much we posted the big blind, 
he makes it 150, three big blinds, and we raise it to nine. We raise it to nine big blinds here. Very good. He then decides, no, no, we're playing here for your small stack, and he re-raises over the top for the full 15 minus his bet, which is going to be 1350, and our call is going to be 11, as you guys see here. So the pot is going to be 3075, as mentioned earlier. Um, basically, a double 30 big blind stack plus the blinds. And in this case, matter of fact, we're going to be calling a little bit lighter than that because yeah. one five that was. That looks about right. So exactly, yeah. We we posted the big blind, so the total pot once we get it all in. Uh, from the big blind, it's going to be 30, basically 60 big blinds plus the small, so 61 total. Um, there you go, six, uh, forgive me, <laughs> 60 and a half total. And yes, our call in this situation, it's very simple because we're not dealing with um, assumed ranges here um, and especially assumed fold equity, right? What this guy isn't opening with and then folding after we come over the top and we make the last aggressive move which as you guys are seeing here is so crucial, right? Because you don't only have your equity when you're making this flat call, but you also have a likelihood that he lets his hand go and then you take down the current pot. Good, D don't look at this right here. Uh, we're only looking at this calculator on top. So this is a scenario in our 30 big, big blind play where the guy comes over the top and our call is in 1050. All right, and essentially, you guys see here the break even equity with the rake is going to be 36 and a half that we need to make that call. 36 and a half percent to break even plus minus zero EV in the long run. All right, and this is um, in aid because the villain is making the last aggressive move to us. All right, so we're, we're in a passive situation here and we have to decide okay, based on pot odds, which are going to be just under two to one at this point, we need 36 and a half percent with the rake to break even in the long run. So what is 36.5%? Let's let's call it 37, right, so that we're making money and not just washing out. All right, and 37% is the question of the hour. Where can we do that? So 37% versus a four bet range over the top of nine's a better ace queen. We can call all the way down to nines. You guys see that? If you're holding nines, this guy's four betting nines are better, ace queen. You put him on a 5.1% range. You can call any nines are better. And of course, your ace kings. Looks like both of the ace queens. Uh, ace queen suited is just good enough, and ace queen off is just a bit under. Uh, so we'll do that. And let's see, king, queen, nope, that's all we got. That's all we got. So if we put this guy on a four betting range, it's nines are better, ace, queen. All we can call, all in with, are nines are better, or ace, king, or ace, queen suited. And exactly this, right? The call all in at nines are better, ace, queen suited for 5.1%. And we put here sevens are better as a question. Yeah, if they're if they're four betting that wide, sevens are better, uh, ace jack or king queen. We can actually call all in with any pair. And the reason for the sevens in again is, of course, that we are real close equity wise, even when it's nines are better, ace queen, right? So even sixes, actually they're even a little better than the sevens, and yeah, fives are just right right there at the break-even equity that you need to make that call. You're a little light with the rake. This is why a lot of guys, you know, they only calculate they only calculate the pot odds without considering the rake, and that, that's very often a big mistake, a uh, relatively big mistake, depending on the, the amount of the rake. But in this case, you know, we, we would call, just based on the rake, it's, or just based on pot odds, we'd call all the way down to fours versus that range. And knowing that we need 36 and a half, almost 37, then we're all the way back up here to nines, maybe eights or sevens. All right, 
And that's yeah, that's what we're looking looking like, guys. So I'm gonna be on the safe side here, and I'm gonna say when we re-steal, somebody comes over the top, and we're at 30 big blinds again. This is a very important point. If you're at 50 big blinds, of course, uh, you probably want to tighten that up because he's gonna be four bet pushing something like this, right? And you're gonna need yeah, this is gonna change. Actually, everything's gonna change here. And again, you guys should yeah, play with that on your own time, but. I would say for us now, um, when somebody comes over the top as a four bet, we are going to let everything go. When we're 30 big blinds or fewer, uh, at ace, queen, suited, or better, and ace, king off. And then also nines are better, as illustrated in the PowerPoint slide here previously. So that is the hybrid strategy in a nutshell. And again, guys, there's a lot of coaching that goes into that. Um, the, the deeper you get uh, stack-wise, of course, the more big stack strategy plays you can incorporate into your into your game. Um, the smaller your stack gets, the more you got to tighten up, increase your increase your bet size in general, start playing the short stack strategy. And again, you can also then buy back up to either 30 or 40 big blinds, whatever your standard play is uh, for your standard buy-in. And what I'd like to do now, for those of you who haven't seen the initial videos, is briefly just fly through the rest of these slides, which are slightly adjusted for mid-stack play uh, concerning betting and general poker theory. So when playing the hybrid strategy, of course, we'll keep to a, more or less our principle of half pot bets on dry boards, non-connected boards, and two-thirds pot bets on continuation bets on flops that are uh, too suited and more connected. And here guys, when you are small stacked or mid stacked, definitely keep in mind that any time your bet or your raise is going to commit more than half of your stack, sometimes even more than a third of your stack, go ahead and either push or fold all in when you are smaller stack. That's the big difference between mid stack small stack play and the big stack play that we covered in previous videos again yeah the calling for nine times for set value depends on the effective stack sizes and your opponent's preflop ranges and over calling over limping with about 15 times when you are in position guys again with suited connectors asex suited hens um, speculative hens it best case scenario limp pot when you're on the button and you can over limp on a passive table otherwise you can also just let those go all right, here's again the golden rule of betting. Just stated that before any time, yeah, the bet raiser call is going to be more than 50% of your stack. It's push or fold, and that's that's what should be on the forefront of your mind. Uh, mind the pot to effective stack ratio. Keep the initiative and what we just saw, of course, fold equity on your side because it increases your expected value quite a bit, as as we have seen. Right, so when you're making that last aggressive move you not only have the probability of winning the hand going for you, but also the probability that your opponent will let it go, as we covered in pretty great detail in response to the comment there at YouTube. And again, guys, the pit principle, position plus in initiative equals profit. Definitely keep that in mind also when you are mid and small stacked. And at this point, I'll just fly through the rest of these slides. You guys pause the video and check them out at your leisure if this is new information for you. And here's a bit from the blinds. As a mid-stack player, we looked at a lot of this just now. <laughs> Pot out to break even equity. We probably beat that horse to death three times. <laughs> and I, I hope that it's definitely useful for your game in the future, guys. Again, uh, quick recap. The wider they open raise, or open re-raise, the wider you can shove. Right. That's um, more or less the long and the short of it. This slide actually does require a bit of explanation because it is markedly different to big stack strategy play. When you're playing big stacked, or even even more so when you're playing deep stacked, uh, 150 big blinds or more, then post flop play becomes exceedingly important. Right, top pair, top kicker kind of hands, top pair good kicker hands, and even over pairs, even over pairs of kings and aces. If you guys, as you guys have seen in the previous videos, are very often a, a good hand, right? They're very often the best hand, but you're very often way ahead, way behind with those hands. And when you are playing fellow bigger deep stack players, then the implied odds 
are on the side of the table of the guy who is playing actually his speculation hands, hopefully in position, right? So the guy that's set mining uh, with mid and small pockets, over calling, for example, with suited connectors, etc. Those are the kind of hands that can actually be very, very lucrative against players who overplay top pair and over pair hands when they're big and deep stacked. However, when we're playing a mid stack strategy, when we're 30 big blinds or fewer between 30 and 50 big blinds, say, then this principle no longer really, really pertains uh, to, yeah, to the mid stack game. So one very concrete example here, just to bring this final point home in our final slide, is as follows. We're playing NL50, and we're in a three-bet heads-up pot. And as you guys saw previously in the expected value and equity calculators I've set up for you, uh, small blinds a quarter, big blinds 50 cents in the NL50 game. There's a guy, let's say, from mid-position who raises it up, right? He makes a two-bet. And you look down, and you see a pair of jacks that is on your three betting range from the cutoff and you raise that up to three times his open raise amount to 450. The open raiser only calls. Now when playing big stacked, effectively big stacked, that two bet open raise flat to three bet line can be with any given pair any any suited connectors, um, funky aces, all kinds of stuff can be there, right? Broadway, even out of position. And yeah, this guy can, yeah, especially set mining is, is functional here when you open raise and then flat that three bet out of position. Now, what happens here is when you're mid stacked, the total pot on the flop there with your three bet, if he only calls you, is gonna be just under 10 bucks. And you only start with 15. And your remaining stack, given your three bet, is already at ten and a half. So your stack, your remaining stack, to the pot, this ratio is almost one to one, almost one to one. And any time the pot is real close to your stack or the effective stack, maybe the stack of your opponents, then you're not in, you're not going to be making a normal bet. You're going to be pushing or folding by and large, not always, but by and large. And that means if you if you look down instead of seeing Jack, you see you know an Ace King. You also three bet that he flats the King flops. Yeah, you can check behind if you want to suck him in. Um, but if he does make a bet, then you're just pushing all pushing all in. And again, when you let's say you um, yeah you raise that up with Ace King suited, and the flop comes. Uh, say you've got the Ace King of Spades. Flop comes. Four spades, seven of spades, uh, ten of diamonds. All right, and you guys know how strong that that fifteen out draw is with your two over cards and your probable nut flush. And yeah, you can also shove with your remaining ten bucks very well on that flop. The flop is a really good spot when you are mid and small stacked to go ahead and push for both fold equity and also at the flop you're going to have the maximum equity on your draw. In general so the turning point is always is of course a yes or no question and on the river if you're looking to value bet guys the question to ask yourself is always always short stack mid stack big big stack doesn't matter can they call me down with a weaker hand if not in general opt for the cheap showdown and don't better raise it if they if they can call you down with a weaker hand then it's it's a bit of an art for um, sizing that bet and the worst thing you can do is have a have a hand with good showdown uh, value say top top pair for example um, in a relatively passively pay, uh, played pot and yeah you go making an ill-timed value bet on the river and get check raised out of your seat that does happen uh, it's happened to us a couple times in the previous videos you guys have seen and again with stats you know very well uh, what your what your opponents are showing down in general uh, what the check raising on the river, stuff like that, at the storm poker tables. As of now, the HUD's not functional. So yeah, again, it's more of a more of an intuitive game, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the rule there on the river. If they can call you down with a weaker hand, go ahead and make a bet for value. Um, just make sure that they're not gonna. Yeah, it's not the type of opponent that's gonna be check raising you out of your seat or pushing you off maybe a a decent hand.
right? That you could have you could have actually seen the showdown for free with. Yeah. So again, guys, the thing to remember is when mid stacked in especially in three bed pots, the turning point is not necessarily on the turn, but very often by and large on the flop, right? That's um, time to shove those big draws. And when you do flop top pair, top kicker, or over pairs, in three bet pots especially, it's go time, give it a shove, and just make sure that you're always adhering to bankroll management to handle those swings. So that concludes the theoretical section that we put together for you guys for small and mid stack play and especially how to calculate your fold equity and relative expected value based on an understanding of your opponents and what they're raising and what they're then calling down with after the fact. I know that was a bit math intensive there at the beginning of the video. I do apologize if it, was, if it was a bit too much, but again, I think it is such a crucial and important concept for especially those of you who are looking to play more professionally at more and more of an expert level in the near future that you guys have at least seen that one time that you can start to work with it yourselves, put your opponents again on ranges, understand how that how that works out concerning expected value, and play with this when you're, you know, work with this a bit when you're not at the tables. Work with this a bit um, when you're home studying um, before maybe your next casino trip or maybe your next next home game or, um, yeah, trip to the underground, underground card room, whatever. Um, or your next online online game here at my bet at the storm tables yeah start to start to view what your opponents are doing not just as isolated independent occurrences but as a part of a whole and then start to move from from this understanding then to putting your opponents on uh, ranges instead of specific hands right and again then understanding how those ranges function from different positions versus different other opponents from other positions and then how they react to your aggressive and passive moves in response to what they've done both pre-flop and post-flop it's so crucial for getting um, just recreational and also advanced recreational players into really expert poker thought and moving into very advanced very advanced play and that's what we here at the My Bet Poker team are hoping that you guys will, will either already have or uh, get into in the very near future. And as always, we're here to, to help you on your way. So if you have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to drop us a line at any time. And also let us know what you guys might like to see uh, covered in future series here at My Bet. Again, this is Dylan. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely hope it was useful for your games. And definitely check back in with us here shortly for the practical application of all this theory in mid-stack play in the very next video in real time. Till then, on behalf of the entire team here, all the best and best of luck at the tables.